There's nothing in here to eat but crackers and screw top wine. In the 1930s, the United States experienced a severe drought known as the Dust Bowl. During this era, many foods were hard to come by. Here are 10 foods people ate to survive during the Dust Bowl. Oh, it's just a boiled sheep stomach. Canned tumbleweed leaves. Tumbleweed. Tumbleweed. Oh, that's good. When most people think of the American West, they think of open spaces, rugged individualism, and the wild, untamed landscape. But the West also had its share of tumbleweed. These resilient, wind-blown plants could be found rolling through the desert or drifting down the plains. These plants have weathered droughts, wildfires, and the passage of time, making them an enduring symbol of the American West. Even though they are a classic staple image of the American West, many people today would never think of them as a source of food. Not many things sound as unappetizing as a can of tumbleweed leaves. But tumbleweed was incredibly prevalent during the Dust Bowl. In the Dust Bowl, almost nothing grew, but weeds such as lamb quarters and tumbleweed thrived. I am a simple tumbleweed. Call me Sage. Families began collecting the weeds and storing them for winter consumption. The Ball Canning Corporation spearheaded a campaign to teach canning skills to Dust Bowl families. Almost 4,000 community canning kitchens helped feed hungry families during the times of the Dust Bowl and Great Depression. Canned tumbleweed was usually brined to add some flavor and reduce the overall harshness of the plant. Although not very appetizing, these weeds were sometimes all a family could harvest during the extreme drought and desolate landscape that was the American Dust Bowl. Having never seen these iconic symbols of the great American West as a source of food, most people living in the present-day American Western regions should consider themselves lucky to not have to resort to getting their nutrition from tumbleweed or other dry desert plants. Bean Soup Stop that soup! <laughs> no. When it comes to meals, soup is one of the most common and versatile there is. It's an easy way to use whatever you have on hand to make a nutritious meal that can be heated and eaten right away, or kept for a quick lunch or dinner later on. During the Great Depression and Dust Bowl, the southwestern United States was hit by a series of devastating dust storms. The storms, which have been compared to the biblical plagues, killed thousands and caused billions of dollars in economic damage. But the storms also left an indelible mark on the region. The most dramatic impact of the Dust Bowl, however, wasn't its death and destruction, but its legacy, the foods of the region. Soups were a staple for Dust Bowl residents. Many homes adopted dried beans or peas cooked with vegetables, water, and flour as a mainstay. Some people kept a pot of soup simmering on their stoves 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Bean-based soups were especially popular because beans were easier to come by than other foods and could be stored for much longer without going bad. Hello, beans of legend. Beans also provided families with a good source of nutrition that could otherwise be lacking from their diets during these times. Bean soups are still popular to this day, although not in the same form as they were during the Dust Bowl. Today, bean-based soups are enjoyed all over the world and are no longer seen as a food of struggle, but more of a specialty in most regions. Hard-boiled eggs The half-orange, half-red one is mine, so don't eat it. Hard-boiled eggs are cooked to the point when the egg white and yolk both solidify, whereas soft-boiled eggs may leave the yolk and occasionally the white partially liquid and uncooked. Around the world, boiled eggs are a popular morning item. Boiling eggs can be done in a variety of ways, with the most popular being immersion in boiling water. Eggs can also be coddled or steamed at a temperature below that of boiling water. One of the most common breakfast foods in the world, the hard-boiled egg is a great source of protein, rich in vitamins and minerals, and a convenient way to add healthy fats and protein to your meals. They're also incredibly versatile, so there's no need to confine them to breakfast. Perfect egg sandwich. During the Dust Bowl, eggs were reasonably simple to get and were an essential source of protein. They were frequently served over rice with a basic white sauce. Families could add boiled eggs to their diets as a means to not only add some much-needed protein to their daily meals, but to also have a snack that could be easily prepared and packed for a day away from home. The Dust Bowl saw many essential foods become unattainable, but luckily for some families, eggs were still available. The families that were fortunate enough to have access to fresh eggs would often eat them morning, afternoon, and night. Pickled Foods Homemade Pickled Beets Pickling foods are a great way to preserve the natural goodness of fruits and vegetables. 
making them easier to eat on the go and adding some unique flavor. It doesn't take much effort to pickle fruits and veggies, and the process can be as simple or as complex as you like. Already, I am the pickle. The process of pickling is the preservation or extension of a food shelf life by fermentation in brine or immersion in vinegar. The texture and flavor of the foods are usually affected by the pickling process, adding a salty or vinegary taste. Vegetables, fruits, meats, fish, and eggs are all examples of pickled foods. Unfortunately for the people who lived during the Dust Bowl, the only foods that were available to pickle were vegetables, fruits, eggs, and a small selection of meats, with jackrabbit meat being a staple protein of the time for most families. Jackrabbit Jackrabbits are shy creatures that prefer to keep their distance and observe others before deciding how to approach them. They are curious and intelligent and have even been known to solve complex problems, but they prefer to be cautious as they are the potential prey of a lot of different animals. Jackrabbits are natural survivors and are very strong runners, which helps them to escape predators. They have long ears that help them to hear danger approaching from afar. Not commonly hunted by humans for their meat, jackrabbits are usually only hunted by other predatory animals in the wild. During the Dust Bowl, however, many families relied on any type of meat that they could find, so jackrabbit was a staple on the menu. There were quite a lot of rabbits in the plains of the Dust Bowl. The region was inundated with jackrabbits, who flourished in the hot, dry climate. Rabbits were hunted not just for their food, but also because they ate the few crops that flourished in the tough terrain, which could be life-threatening to the folks who relied on the few things they could grow. The rabbits were dubbed Hoover pigs by farmers after President Herbert Hoover, whom locals blame for the Great Depression. A common Dust Bowl supper was jackrabbit, biscuit, and beans. Bacon grease. I wake up to the smell of crackling bacon. There's nothing quite like the smell of freshly cooked bacon. It signals the presence of a delicious meal, and it permeates homes around the world to this day. The process of making bacon is a simple one, but the grease that it creates is often overlooked in present-day kitchens. When bacon fat is cooked, it liquefies and creates drippings. When it cools, it hardens into a lard-like substance. During the Dust Bowl, food was notoriously hard to come by, especially meats, so many families were always trying to stretch whatever food they had into more than one meal. Fine, it's three eggs with bits of bacon. I like bacon. Bacon fat has a distinct flavor and may be utilized in a variety of dishes. In Southern American cuisines, bacon fat is traditionally conserved and used as a cooking foundation and all-purpose flavoring for anything, from gravy to cornbread to salad dressing. During the Dust Bowl, many cooks would use bacon grease as a means of adding some much-needed nutrition to their undernourished families. It wasn't so much a way of adding flavor as it is today, but a need for extra calories and a way of utilizing all of the things people could get their hands on. Casseroles There's six months' worth of casseroles in the freezer. Casseroles are a great way to feed a crowd, but they're also a great way to make a lot of food without having to cook individual portions. The casserole is an easy way to get dinner on the table, but it's also a great way to use up leftovers or incorporate different flavors and textures into a single meal. Baked meals have been a staple for quite some time. However, around the 1870s, the idea of casseroles started to evolve into its modern form. Most civilizations have always cooked in earthenware vessels, but casserole cooking as a one-dish meal became popular in the United States in the 20th century. Stan Smith's famous dinner cooked chicken. During the Dust Bowl, hodgepodge casseroles were widespread. They were more like vehicles for nourishment rather than consumed for their flavor. In one popular dish, mushy spaghetti noodles, white sauce, and heavily boiled carrots were roasted in a pan and then assembled together in a casserole-style dish. It's safe to say that your average casserole in today's world is much more appetizing than what was available during the harsh times of the Dust Bowl. Dandelion Salad Must be the last one of the season. Mm. Salad dates back to the Roman era, where cold vegetables were brine seasoned. Greens, celery root, chervil, truffles, and hard-boiled eggs with creamy mustard dressing were supposedly loved by Queen Mary of Scots throughout the medieval and early modern periods. But it wasn't until the 19th century that the leafy starter truly took off as a popular meal offering. Even though this Dust Bowl era dish has been long forgotten in the United States, it's still fairly common in other countries. The dandelion is usually seen to be a bothersome weed. <laughs> you put a dandelion in the daisy basket. At the same time, it has a long history of being used as a medicinal plant to treat swelling, indigestion, skin problems, 
eye problems, diarrhea, and heartburn. It also, surprisingly, has a higher concentration of vitamins A and C than spinach and tomatoes. They're also packed with vitamins B and D, as well as potassium, calcium, and iron. This may explain why it had such a prestigious role in the Dust Bowl diet. It was a healthy alternative that included plain greens from any area, vinegar if available, pepper, and salt to taste. It was a cheap meal that any family could prepare, even during the height of the Dust Bowl. Potato Pancakes You've lost weight and so tall. The Dust Bowl ushered in a period of scarcity-driven innovation, as households were forced to make do with fewer home essentials and relied on their ingenuity to devise substitutes made from more easily accessible items. Families throughout the Dust Bowl used what they had to make up for shortages of nearly every food and item, from women drawing a line down the back of their legs to give the illusion of wearing stockings to patching shoes with cardboard. One of the most widely consumed foods during this time can still be found across many cultures today and is one of the foods on this list that is still widely adored. Be made by the hands of a god. Potatoes are one of those foods that are readily available even in difficult times. They're also one of the most cost-effective foods. As a result, it's no surprise that potatoes were popular throughout the Dust Bowl and Great Depression. Chefs during the Dust Bowl relied heavily on potatoes as a substitute in a variety of cuisines. A potato pancake was one of the most popular foods to grace the plates of families across the nation. This was a basic dish that involved frying or cooking shredded potatoes in a pan and formed into pancake-like shapes. This dish was served at almost every meal, as it provided more nutrition and flavor to the bleak plates of the time. It's one of the most well-remembered dishes from the Great Depression and continues to be a popular item to this day. Peanut Butter Stuffed Onions Onions? Onions! This name may seem strange, since the two components of this meal have nothing to do with one another and even sound pretty revolting. They are also unrelated to one another in every way, having no real reason to be combined. During the Great Depression, however, this strange combination of baked onions and peanut butter was rather prevalent. It was created for the first time by the Bureau of Home Economics and has since become famous for its peculiar flavor. Baked onions were stuffed with scoops of peanut butter, resulting in a dish that was widely ridiculed at first. The creator of the dish asked women to offer it to all family members and become budgeters in an attempt to alleviate some of the strain that the times had put on the average family. Although it's difficult to envision peanut butter with anything other than jelly, peanut butter and jelly? Or chocolate, baked onions packed with peanut butter became the go-to dish during the Great Depression because it was so inexpensive and actually tasted pretty good, all things considered. Because most people could hardly afford to eat, they had to get inventive. And things in the kitchen sometimes got a little odd. We've got more. Just tap or click on another video. First time here? Then hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell.